King Arthur, Chapter 5. This is on page 439 of your textbook. Sir Lancelot has many adventures and performs many heroic deeds. He then returns to the round table and resumes his love affair with Queen Guinevere. He defends her against a charge of treason. In tournaments, he fights in disguise on the side against the king. After King Arthur and his knights returned to Britain, Sir Lancelot became the leading knight of the round table. Not only had he performed outstanding feats upon the field of battle in Gaul, but at home he surpassed all other knights in tournament skills and in noble deeds. Queen Guinevere loved him above all other men, and he loved her above all other women. Sir Lancelot loved to earn glory, honor, and praise. He soon tired of the routine of tournaments and other such contests of skill with arms. He decided to increase his honor by seeking adventures in which he could excel in other, equally noble ways. One noble way in which Lancelot proved himself was in his loyalty to Queen Guinevere. After falling asleep under a tree, he awoke to find himself imprisoned by four queens. They said to him, We know Queen Guinevere is the only lady you love, but she is lost to you forever. You must choose one of us or die in this prison. Lancelot replied, You have given me a difficult choice, but I will die rather than choose one of you. If I were free, I would prove to you that Queen Guinevere is true to her lord, King Arthur. Sir Lancelot also proved himself by defending ladies in distress. Not long after his adventure with the four queens, he came upon a maiden in the forest who complained of a knight who assaulted any women who passed his way. Are you telling me that a knight is a thief and a rapist? Lancelot asked. He brings shame upon the order of the knighthood. He has broken his sacred oath and he should die for it. Ride ahead of me, slowly, through the forest. If that knight bothers you, I will come to your rescue. When the knight appeared and forced the maiden from her horse, Sir Lancelot challenged him to a duel and killed him. Now, lady, he said, what other service can I perform for you? Nothing at this time, sir, the maiden replied, but you need a wife. You are the most courteous of knights to all ladies, yet you love none of them. I have heard that Queen Guinevere has placed an enchantment upon you, so that you will never love any one but her. Fair lady, replied Lancelot, I have no interest in marriage, for then I would have to remain with my wife and give up the tournaments, battles, and adventures that I love. To love a woman and not marry her would be even worse. God punishes such immoral behavior. Such knights are unfortunate in their contests and wars. Sir Lancelot then left the maiden. After riding through the forest for two days, he found himself at the castle of Tintagel, where King Arthur had been born. Two giants approached him, each armed with a huge club. Lancelot immediately raised his shield, fended off the blow of the first giant's club, and sliced off his head with his sword. Seeing this, the other giant ran for his life. Lancelot caught him and sliced through his body from the shoulder to the stomach. Lancelot then returned to the castle. When he entered the great hall, sixty ladies came and knelt before him in thanks. Most of us have been imprisoned here for seven years, they told him, earning our food by embroidering silk. Who are you that you were able to deliver us from these giants? Many knights have tried, but their courage brought them only death. We thought that only Sir Lancelot of the Lake could save us, for these giants feared him alone. Fair ladies, Lancelot replied, I am the very knight you hope to see. Then he left them to their freedom and went on his way. Sir Lancelot had many more adventures. Word of his triumphs reached King Arthur and Queen Guinevere in various ways. Sir Lancelot asked some of the people he helped to go to Arthur's court and relate their stories to the queen and the knights assembled there. He also sent knights he had defeated to Queen Guinevere to become her prisoners. Other tales of Lancelot's heroic deeds were told by those of King Arthur's knights who met him in the course of their own adventures. By the time Sir Lancelot returned to the round table, he had already earned the greatest name of any knight in the world and was honored by both the common folk and the nobility. Lancelot's love affair with Guinevere resumed on his return. Their relationship was common knowledge at court. Lancelot was embarrassed by the gossip and began to spend his time helping the numerous maidens and ladies who asked for his assistance. Queen Guinevere finally called Sir Lancelot to her and said, Lancelot, 
your love for me must be dying, for you no longer seem to enjoy my company. Instead, you spend your time helping other women with their problems. Lancelot replied, Since I was last part of the round table, I have given up all the pleasures of this world except my love for you. I might have chosen to become a holy man if I did not love you as I do. You are my earthly joy, and I love you too much to give you up for anyone, even Arthur, my lord and king. However, our continued boldness will bring great slander and shame upon us, and I do not want to see you dishonored. Surely you are aware, Guinevere, that many knights already speak openly of our love. I fear them more for your sake than mine, since if I must, I can return to my own country across the sea. But you must remain here and face whatever is said about you. Therefore, Lancelot concluded, I am making an effort to help various ladies so that the members of the court will think that I love attending all women and not just you. Queen Guinevere said, I see from your words that you are a false knight. You love other women and have only scorn for me. Therefore, I will no longer love you. Leave this court and never return, for I never want to see you again. To prove that she loved other knights as much as she loved Sir Lancelot, Queen Guinevere gave a dinner for them. One of the knights ate a poisoned apple and immediately died. Because Queen Guinevere had prepared the feast, she was blamed for his death. Another knight came before King Arthur and the knights of the round table and accused the queen of treason, which was punishable by death. King Arthur said, Fair lords, my heart is heavily troubled. I must be the judge in this matter, so I cannot also defend my wife. I ask that one of you come to her aid so that she will not be burned for a crime she did not commit. Forgive me, my gracious lord, said the knight, but not one of the twenty-four knights who attended the dinner is willing to defend the queen's innocence in this matter. Arthur replied, Be armed and ready for a contest in fifteen days. When that day comes, if no knight has come forward to defend the queen, then that will indicate her guilt and she will be burned. King Arthur then went to Queen Guinevere and asked, Where is Sir Lancelot? He would defend you. His relatives tell me that he has left Britain, she responded. The king advised, Ask his nephew, Sir Bors, to fight for you at, for Lancelot's sake. But Bors was unwilling to honor Queen Guinevere's request. Madam, he replied, how can I defend you when I attended that dinner? If I take your part, the other knights will suspect that I poisoned the apple. Sir Lancelot would have defended you even if you were guilty, but you drove him out of Britain although he worshipped you. How can you ask me to defend you when you have treated my uncle in such a cruel manner? King Arthur found Queen Guinevere pleading with Lancelot's nephew. Gentle knight, he said, have mercy upon the queen, for I am certain that she is innocent. Defend her for the love of Sir Lancelot. My lord, replied Bors, you are asking me to incur the wrath of my fellow knights. Nevertheless, I will defend the queen for Lancelot's sake and your sake, unless a better knight is willing to be her champion. When Guinevere banished Lancelot from the court, he went to stay with a hermit in the countryside. He received the news of Guinevere's distress with great joy, for now he had an opportunity to win back her favor. The day of the contest arrived. The two knights were prepared to begin when suddenly another knight, riding a white horse and bearing a shield with a strange coat of arms, galloped out of the woods and talked with Sir Lancelot's nephew. Sir Bors then announced that this stranger would defend the queen in his place. The strange knight defended Guinevere against her accuser and proved her innocent of treason. After the contest, King Arthur asked the strange knight to remove his helmet and reveal his identity. It was, of course, Sir Lancelot. Queen Guinevere rejoiced at his return and regretted her harsh treatment of him. Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table then prepared to participate in a great tournament at Camelot. The king asked Queen Guinevere to accompany him, but she said she was too ill to ride. Sir Lancelot also refused to attend the tournament because his wounds from his combat in defense of Guinevere had not yet healed. The coincidence provided those who loved scandal with much to discuss, and King Arthur left for Camelot with sadness and anger in his heart. After the king departed, Queen Guinevere said to Sir Lancelot, You were wrong to stay behind. 
our enemies will accuse us of remaining here to make love. Lancelot decided to attend the tournament in disguise and fight on the side against the king. Guinevere could not convince him to appear in a more honest manner, but King Arthur recognized Lancelot when they lodged in the same town en route to Camelot and was pleased to see him. All was not well, however. Since Lancelot never wore the token of any woman, he agreed to wear one as part of his disguise. During the course of the tournament, he was seriously wounded by his own nephew, Sir Bors. In time, Sir Gawain discovered Sir Lancelot's identity. Queen Guinevere was furious that her knight had worn the token of another woman when he had always refused to wear her token. As a result, when the next great tournament was announced, Guinevere said to Lancelot, I understand why you wore a maiden's token at the last tournament. However, from now on, I want you to wear my golden token upon your helmet as a sign of your love for me, and make certain that your relatives are well informed of your disguise so they do not injure you. Sir Lancelot agreed, and at the next tournament he again rode against the knights of the round table, wearing Queen Guinevere's token. His relatives, who were also in disguise, fought on his side. Sir Gawain recognized them, and he counseled King Arthur that it would be better to let Sir Lancelot and his relatives win the day than, rather than to contest heavily against their own knights.